It is the season of 2021 prophecies. Should politics and religion mix? And former presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar sells major shares in Intel as a claimed political persecution as reasons. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Laden. Welcome to Plus Politics. As the new year begins, one of the events that are sure to happen is the releasing of prophecies by religious leaders globally and particularly in Nigeria. Among some of the prophecies released by these clergymen this year is that there will be a lot of surprises. But looking at the events of prophecies which spoke about past political events, we asked, what is the nexus between religion and politics? We have two clergymen who are politically savvy. I'm referring to Reverend Dakpo Daramola. I must put it on record that many of us know him as a public affairs analyst. He is a reverend with Methodist Church of Nigeria. Good evening, Reverend Dakpo Daramola. It's my pleasure. And also being... Happy New Year to everybody. Yeah, and Happy New Year to you too. And we also have, uh, we also call him Gide Olugun, but for the purpose of this discussion, I'm also going to introduce him as Pastor Gide Olugun. He's also a legal practitioner. Good evening, Pastor Olugun. Good, good evening. Happy New Year. Yeah, good to see you. Happy New Nigeria. Interesting. And uh, amen. Let's quickly get to the, the, to the kernel of this discussion. We understand that this has been a tradition over time. But I saw something that was a bit disturbing in one of these online medium, which says that um, list of failed prophecies in 2020. Where's the nexus? I thought prophecies are meant to be fulfilled. Let me start with uh, Reverend Akwadaramala. Well, uh, once again, uh, it's a pleasure to be on the program this evening. Um, and uh, again, say Happy New Year to all our uh, viewers and also uh, plus TV uh, crew. Um, I will start by saying that, yes, like you did say, prophecies um, as uh, declared by prophets are meant to come to pass, largely, because it is believed that, you know, those who, whoever is speaking, is speaking the mind of God or the mind of a higher deity. It depends on the context in which you are looking at it. But if you are looking at it from the Christian religion, and I think we should narrow it down to that, because sometimes you go to a Dibia, a Dibia can also consult other gods and tell you that this is what, you know, that is what we call our own, uh, uh, the African traditional religion. So almost every religion has some form of prophecies or the other. But if you want us to narrow it down, because the voices we hear more at this time, we hear voices of reverence, you know, pastors or you know, priests, you know, ministers in church or, or churches. So for me, I think prophecies are meant, you know, to come to pass. Are, it's talking about the mindset of God, something that God intends to do, either in the life of a person or in the life of a people, that is a community, you know, and all that. So, and we have seen this historically, you know, biblically, we've seen it and it has come to pass many times. But there are people who are generally not equally, um, they are, well, we cannot begin to determine who is a pastor or who is not beyond what the Bible tells us, that by their fruits, you shall know them. Um, and the fact that also when they come up with prophecies, um, and it doesn't come to pass, it worries me. And then I begin to question, is it God that said so? Or is something that they, an intuition, something they felt, you know, and they feel that they should share it because either it will be spiritually beneficial or uplifting or something. Because God also says in the Bible, that in speaking scripturally now, that woe unto that person, that man, that, you know, says, thus, thus, says the Lord, when the Lord himself has not spoken. Okay. So prophecies has to do with when God speaks. So the person, the convener of that message must have heard clearly from God. 
Okay. I'll give an example just to set the tone quickly. Okay. When somebody tells us that, um, I mean, I'm sorry to go to, okay, let's start with Kobe. An example. I remember there's a servant of God in this land, a very popular one, who said that COVID-19 will become a thing of the past. You know, come May, I think, uh, sorry, March. March 26th or March 27th. It was a global, it was a, it was a well, you know, publicized, prophecy. you know, uh, prophecy. So to say, but it never came to pass. Okay. Now, is that the mindset of God or the man of God was just saying what he hopes and feels that he wants to see should happen? You know, so, but when you give an exact date that by this date, something of this nature will happen, then we want to believe you are speaking the mind of God. Okay. And if it does not come to pass, then <laughs> we can begin to question, you know, such prophecy. So for me, Prophecies ask clearly to do with the convening the mindset of God. And ordinarily, in very clear context, when I scripturally otherwise, okay. it has... Reverend Apo, trust me quite, quite a lot to talk about. Let me quickly go to Mr. Logo or Pastor Logo. In clear terms, I, I also read the Bible, and I remember that um, there was a time a prophet in the Bible, the prophet Samuel, when... It was time to anoint uh, David. At a time, would you call what he was doing with uh, the siblings of David guesswork before he did what God actually told him? Could that be what is happening with these failed, in quote, prophecies? Obviously, Samuel did not fail because even though he started on the note of the flesh, eventually he submitted himself to the Spirit of God that made him realize that the guys at home may not be suitable for the office, that and you have to go and get David, who God has tested, because biblically too, God doesn't use those who have not been shaken. That is why you notice that Moses went through a lot. And having said that, talking about prophecy, if you read Amos chapter 3, verse 7, Amos chapter 3, verse 7 says that God does nothing except he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Having said that, he has the discretion to reveal or not to reveal. And look at the account of Elijah. If you read 1 Kings chapter 17, Elijah went to the king and told the king that, as I stand before the Lord, there will not be rain in this land for three and a half years. And it came to pass. If you go to um, 1 Kings chapter 18, he returned to the king that now that the first prophecy has been fulfilled, rain is coming upon the land, and rain actually came upon the land. So we've seen God moving in mighty ways. You saw how Elijah called down fire on Mount Carmel, that let God, who is God, send okay. fire, and God sent fire. And if you look at the account of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And that the government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be a wonderful counselor, everlasting father, the almighty, you know, the prince of peace. Okay. And it came to pass, perhaps not in the lifetime of Isaiah. So there are some prophecies that may have to go through the, uh, the test of time. But that is not to say there are not fake prophets. Because the office of the prophet is an office ordained by God. And not all are called to be to prophets. Be prophets. Some are evangelists, some are pastors, some are prophets. And prophecy is just revealing what is to come. Whether they come to pass or not, it's okay. a different thing. And the Reverend has clearly told us what the Bible says. If you go and say, thus says the Lord, when God has not said anything, you may be putting okay. yourself into trouble. Pastor Logo. Let me stay with you before I go to Reverend Dakpo. In clear terms now, I, um, we want to know when these pastors need to bring out the dichotomy between predictions and probably their opinions, connection with the prophet, like Reverend Dakpo said. How do we know this is the mind of God? You, you, you test it by fulfillment. But like I said, some get fulfilled immediately. There was a time there was a, a siege against Samaria. And a prophet of God rose and said that by this time, tomorrow, 
there will be plenty in the land. And a federal minister said, how can this thing be that even if God opens the windows of heaven, it cannot be. And he told that minister that you will see it with your eyes, but you will not taste it. And it came to pass. So you have prophecies that are fulfilled within 24 hours, some within seven years, some within even a hundred years okay. or so. But the caution here is that if God has not revealed to you, please don't test the fire of God by okay. coming to declare to people that he has revealed to you. But God reveals. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Reverend Dr. I'm trying to, uh, would I call it, tweak your mind now. Is this a situation about, you know, sometimes when you hear some prophecies, you look at it that, are they really, do they really understand how things work? If someone says COVID will be a thing of the past by end of March, does the person understand the strains of this kind of disease? Or since it is from God, we should not even use our rational mind to, to fathom it. How do we test the you know, this prophecy, he has said that you test it by fulfillment. Shouldn't we also have some kind of, you know, agreement in our mind? I don't want to say in our spirit to know whether this is real or not. Because you're supposed to run no, with like, it. Uh, let, let me align with uh, Pastor Logu. It, it's very clear that, when, like I said, and that's why when I was setting the tone, I said prophecy clearly, when you, lose the, when you break it down to prophecy, prophecy is clearly speaking for telling saying something that God is saying will happen. Now, I also want to align with him that sometimes some prophecies doesn't have a timeline, okay? Clearly, it doesn't have a timeline. In the life of a people, on the life of somebody, I mean, it doesn't have a timeline. Sometimes they can, I mean, at, at birth, at birth, somebody, a man of God, maybe at the point of um, dedication or something, can say that God is saying that this child will be a ruler. Now, I mean, that child at that point cannot be a ruler while he was he's still being carried as a baby. But over time, certain things, certain occurrences will happen in the life of that child that eventually all of this will come together and it will bring to fruition, you know, the purpose of God for the life of that child. Okay. That also happens in the life of a nation, in the life of a people. So in this instance, when, when, you, are, when you are speaking the mind of God, there's nothing to agree or disagree with. But I want to borrow your word, which is quite instructive in what we are discussing. And that's why I also hinted at it when I was laying the foundation. That sometimes also, people opinionate. People have, you know, self-expression. You know, and in this self-expression, they model it because you feel that you are a servant of God. So everything that comes to your mind, that passes through your mind, has to do with a voice of God. No, you have your mind, you, you have a mind. And God has his own voice. And so sometimes what you are telling people could be your mind, could just be what you like. I'll give an example. I'm a Chelsea supporter in football. I support Chelsea. I mean, does it mean that when I tell my, my other supporters, maybe when we meet or talk, I say, don't worry, this match, we are beating them. We are, beating, we are winning 2-0 or 3-0. You know, <laughs> does it mean that I'm speaking the mind of God? That is nothing to do with God. That is just something that I like. Okay, it's something I like, and I'm just expressing. So that was just self-expression. And so if Chelsea coincidentally now wins 2-0 or 3-0, somebody will begin to you know, worship me and say, ah, every time this man speaks, he's speaking the mind of God about Chelsea. That is, that is a total fallacy. And that's Reverend what some Dapur, men of God, Dapur, they fall into. Reverend Dapur, please, I want to stay with you. Let's quickly look at a um, clear case of some of these prophecies that give birth to this discussion. For example, a prophet or a pastor just said, oh, Oshibajo is going to succeed Buhari. Now, somebody would say, that sounds logical, president to the vice president. And I heard someone saying that that's just being postulating that, oh, he's looking at what people have been saying. Therefore, it can't be more than Oshibajo and a few other people. Is that the way we should react to these prophecies or why shouldn't the pastor just, pardon my language, keep quiet? That's what I'm saying, that if, if spiritually somebody is giving a message that it could be Oshibajo, it could be somebody, in fact, some, most times it could be somebody obscure. Let, let me also tell you that in political calculations, thank God we also have political leanings. 
Oshiba Ido has been in the, on the, in the radar somewhere, somehow. Even when I was told from, by, by, by people we are close to that even when Tunde Bakari was chosen to be the vice presidential candidate to, uh, to this same Buhari, Buhari. that the, the person they, they, they had in mind was actually Oshiba Ido. Okay? So if somebody had told Oshiba Ido sometime down the line in his, as a commissioner or even a lecturer in the University of Lagos, that's uh, what God is telling me concerning you is that you will be the vice president or you will be at the top echelon of this nation's political you know, structure. Or she might have look back and say, some 20 something years ago, there was this prophecy concerning me. Even when I didn't imagine that I would have anything to do with politics, I was just a small lecturer, lecturer in the University of Lagos. And it can then change, it can, that's why I said sometimes it happens to babies, that you can, you can begin to connect, you, you can begin to connect the dots and you realize that. Things will begin to work in your favor, either staggeredly or proportionally, but it will definitely come to pass in your life because it was God that said so. Let me say it this way. You remember uh, a pastor, a, a friend of mine, really, who played for this nation, now Pastor Taribo West. We saw the video that went viral. When Pastor Taribo prayed and said, he said it. He said, God is telling him that Donald Trump, Donald John Trump, we still emerge as the president of the United States of America. Now, except a miracle happens today, that is between today and tomorrow, when, you know, Mike, Mike Pence, the vice president, will sit over, you know, the joint session to ratify uh, the election results from the Electoral College, college except the only thing, which I don't see it happening, but except it happens. Now, but mm. Pastor Taribo West said it will happen. And we are waiting for the prophecy to come to pass. That was exact. And he said, God told him. Okay. Let me also remind you that the spiritual advisor to, to uh, 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 Donald Trump himself, that this pastor, Paula White, Paula White came. We also had the prayers. When she was praying, invoking different the angels, angels from Africa. And he said that the <laughs> angels would, they would go now, instructing and directing the angels to go and change the result of the election. Now, I'm sure... She will be telling the president as a spiritual advisor that God is telling me to tell you <laughs> that you will get your mandate back. Now, so that's what I said sometimes, you know, and, and you ask a fundamental question. And the question is that at this religion and politics, at what point does it meet? It meets at the point right from the ancient days, even from the Bible, where you will see the king, okay, who is the spiritual leader, will tell them to go and call the prophet. To come and set the mind of God concerning a step or a, you know that they are about to take or a situation. Okay. What they need to do. Should they okay. go to war or not go to war and all of that? Okay, so Reverend Dakpo. I, I get the background. Play. I get the background quite quite clearly. Let me go back to Pastor Logo. He has raised quite a lot of issues, and I want you to jump in on any of them. But in addition to that, can we also look at these prophecies? Who is at stake here? Is it the God who send you or you who gave the prophecy? Because from the example he gave, why should Paula White still be bothered about the fulfillment of the prophecy if it is about God who sent her? It's, God cannot be bothered. God is God. Revelations 1.8 says he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the God who was, who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. So... He's in his own. Wow. I guess it's, it just froze just now. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, okay, maybe I will have your, your colleague to help you with that while we wait for you to connect. So, Reverend Dagbo. You can hear me. Okay, we can hear you now. Exactly. So, if you go around prophesying when God has not prophesied, you are the one taking the risk, like Aethiopel in the Bible. But what I know is that sometimes decrees are made. If you look at Exodus chapter 14, where Moses was to lead the Israelites across the Red Sea, he said to them, Oh, Pastor Logo, you need to bind that demon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you just finish your thoughts on that? To bring that into fulfillment. Yes, you know, so Moses declared that the enemies you see now, you, you will see, see them no more. more. And God collaborated with him. 
God did the same with Joshua to bring down the wall of Jericho. If you read Joshua chapter 6 from verse 1 to 20. So it is true that God uses a man or woman to carry out his mandate on the earth. But it is a very dangerous thing to claim what has not been ascribed to you mm. by God. But for generally, uh, generally to everybody, irrespective of the prophecy that has been ruled out, the Bible says you should even test every spirit. You are not compelled to believe every prophecy that is ruled out. And even when they are ruled out, what you have to do is find a way of avoiding what is evil. And that is why the Bible says that the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. So beyond waiting for prophets to make declarations, why don't you learn to know your God? Apostle Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Pastor Logo, I, I know I've looked for your trouble today. <laughs> Pastor Logo, I know I've looked for your trouble today. You have given me so and many so assignments for me to go and prophecy, cross check. We should all ask God for his mind concerning all. He promised Joseph that Joseph was going to become great. And the odds of life were contrary to Joseph, but Joseph held on to it. And in Genesis chapter 41, he became a prime minister in a strange land. So God can speak to you. God can speak through prophet. But you are to work things out with your faith, with the right action. For example, are we saying, many people have said there's a curse on Nigeria. No, God has blessed Nigeria. We have just deliberately decided not to do the right things with our resources. So the day we decide to start doing the right things with our resources, we will be a prosperous nation, perhaps the third richest country in the world. Because we pray so much, we fast so much, but we have, done, we have not done the needful. Our God is not a magician. Jesus said to the men in the marriage in Cana of Galilee in John chapter 2, that go and fill the pots with water. And they obeyed him, okay. and the water Pastor Logan. to wine. Pastor Logan, obviously you are Pastor Ulugu, and the message is not going to end if I don't uh, find a way of interrupting you. But just in 30 seconds, in 30 seconds, I would like to get your thoughts on one trending tweet on social media where I, I presuppose that the author is a Nigerian, but the author came across like an American or someone from the uh, 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 Western world saying that we Africans, what we are doing is we are building churches. We are doing, I don't know whether you've seen that tweet, while, ra rather... Over there, they are building their sciences, they are creating vaccines. All we've been doing is just creating babies. What's your reaction to that? I have, raised, I have raised an issue that Saudi Arabia is not managed by Christians. The UAE is not managed by Christians. So those who have developed, I, I cannot even tell you the religion practice in China, but I know that today, China is the biggest producer of electricity. China... Oh, so sad about that. I, I think I got your drift, and I know where you are headed. Reverend Duckworth, same question to you. When do we draw the line to know when to plan rather than just hanging on prophecies without some clear-cut plans? No, Reverend Duckworth, Let's please, can I quickly get... build this country. Okay. I'm so sorry the network is not friendly on that. But let me quickly get your final so, thoughts, Reverend. Okay, Apple. no, my thoughts are very clear. Um, okay. You know, Pastor Lass said it somewhere, in one interview somewhere, and said that we rely too much on God. I wish they would have, like Pastor Logan said, I wish as he was talking about us relying on God too much and not, you know, walking, doing, you know, walking, the, walking our talk. I, I, I wish that politicians like him would have shown us the way. They would have walked their talk. And then we can believe that, yes, beyond... Because God has endowed everybody. And I think that's the point that Pastor Logan was trying to make. Let me also quickly end this way, or let me conclude this way also. That we must, you know, uh, we must test all, all, all you know, uh, the, the voices of servants of God. Don't forget in this country, we have men of God who have said that, servants of God in this case, so not politicians, well, turned politicians, who said that God said they will rule this country as presidents. And they have contested and contested and contested over and over again, and nothing came out of it. We don't need to name names. We all know their names. I can, and if I need to name names, I can quickly do that. But we have, we have many of them, you know, including Pastor Chris Okotia and all of them, who have said, God said they will become presidents, and we are still waiting. Whether that prophecy will come, they've jumped different parties, and from Fresh Party to Justice Party to all of them, and we are still waiting to see, you know, how that will come to pass. Finally, 
Uh, let me say that when, when servants of God, because they, of their affiliation to one party or the other, or their connection to a politician, they begin to say what they feel, you know, they want to, of course, because they want to benefit, they will benefit. If their own person is in governance or, you know, you know also, they will benefit. So they begin to spew all sorts of things. And, you know, to, within okay. them, they will tell you it is God that is saying okay. it. Okay. You know, but we know that when God speaks, it comes to pass. And that is what we should look out for. When you have a man of God who told us in this country that we should not worry. Thank you so much. Uh, it's on that note that we will have to wrap up this discussion. Quite insightful. I would, uh, trust me, I think this conversation should continue on all our social media platforms, especially the YouTube. Let's watch this over and over again. And let's regurgitate on some of the points raised by the two guests we've had today. Thank you so much, Reverend Dakpo, uh, Daramola, and thank you, Pastor Logun, for your insight on this issue. I know you've not exhausted all the points, but we have to go now. And guess what? We have to keep Reverend Dakpo, Daramola, for the second discussion. But we'll take a short break now, and when we return, we will try to give an answer to the question on why Atiku Abubakar sold his shares in Intel. That will be after this short break. Please don't go anywhere.